Uh, obviously, I've been away for the past three something weeks. Uh, for those of you who have yet to guess, I was out of town uh, for two of those weeks searching for a new place to live. I'm going to be buying a new house, moving to a new place, hopefully within the by the end of this year, not the near future, but the not too distant future. So in the meantime, I am back. The breakdancing homeless potato god has returned. And I think not too late uh, in time for a potential Final Fantasy 16 reveal. I wasn't able to really focus on any news developments in the gaming world while I was away. I was pretty busy, so take a moment right now before we get into the live stream gameplay to go over everything and see what's up. So no change, obviously, first off to the Final Fantasy 16 website. Ooh, what is this? May 27th, State of Play next Thursday brings new game reveals, sneak peeks, and updates. Uh huh, huh, huh. All right. Oh, what's this thing? Final Fantasy XI uh, Online, a 20th anniversary retrospective with the game's creators. There's the uh, the forecast for Final Fantasy XIV 20 years from now. Chaotic, compelling gameplay of Spider Hack, the prequel to Spider Hell. All right, let's take a look at this one first. Obviously, the most important one. I think it's pretty safe to say. <laughs> That 16 most likely will be at this state of play. That is not hype. That is not hype trolling. We have confirmation that we are getting a new big update by spring. Spring is almost over. June 2nd is what, like literally two weeks before the end of spring. So unless Square Enix is planning on pulling something out of a hat, then I think it's a pretty good bet that uh, it's going to show up during the state of play. So cool. We will cover that. 30 minutes, it doesn't say anything about Japanese or third-party Japanese partners like it did with the previous State of Play announcement, so uh, weird. I mean, they did that before, and it hyped everyone up, and 16 didn't show up, and then now they're not hyping it up at all, and most likely we're going to get it, so I'm cool. Mm, okay, Dragon's Dogma's 10th anniversary website launched. Huh, interesting. Coincidence? I don't know. Labyrinth Striker, the why would they... Why would they trademark this now? I would have thought that they trademarked it already. Uh, 7 Remake Integrate is already available for PS5 and PC via Epic uh, Games Store, but with news on 7's 25th anniversary plan for June. Oh, okay. Uh, this trademark might have something to do with it. The trademark for Labyrinth Striker is actually a combination of both words. It's a mobile game. As the end of the spelling for Labyrinth is the start of the spelling for... Striker. Huh? I don't get it. It is difficult to guess what the English equivalent here could be, but our best guess is Labyrinth... Oh, in Japanese, like the, the kana. In music, the final bar line is the last bar line in a composition, so it's possible... New... Uh, final Fantasy VII Melody of Memories? I don't know. Okay. Have you been heard about the, the SOB? Yes, I actually just heard about it. Uh, right now. Good, good God, I came back. Um, and the moment I came back, I was sick as hell. I was, uh, I had a bad, bad headache. So uh, I've been away for quite a while. So now I'm just kind of getting caught up on everything. Uh, there's a new PSVR 2 set that's supposed to be debuting uh, during the state of play as well. Will this finally be a place where we see more of Final Fantasy 16? Wow, it's, uh, it's permeated everywhere. Fans of the new Square Enix RPG have been kept waiting for over 18 months for a new showing of the game, and so far we've seen nothing, nothing. No, we've gotten some some little bits here and there. Uh, probably not intentionally. And part of, you know, ancillary interviews and such. Uh, after all, producer Nakishida did recently reveal that the trailer of the game was done. Uh-huh, quote-unquote, ready to go. That was, that quote was either mistranslated or misconstrued or misused or abused or, you know, game of telephone. And then people made up stories in their head. Yes, I am expecting 16 because, and this isn't hype trolling either, and I think realistically we can expect 16. Because what are they going to do? It's almost the end of spring. They're going to have a Sony state of play where they're going to leverage all the, 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 the highly anticipated third-party games, not have 16, and then in the last two weeks, on midnight of the night before, they're going to drop a trailer? I don't think so. Makes no sense. Remember that the Awakening trailer showed during a 
Sony State of Play or a Sony Showcase. So what would be the point of not following up with it and then leveraging that same marketing? Like, I don't know. I don't think a PS5 Pro is likely to come out anytime soon. The PS4 Pro came out, what, like three or four years into the game's, uh, the console's life cycle. But then the PS5 is the first console where I think the hardware was uh, superior to uh, PC hardware, at least the, the SSD, when it first came out. Most consoles, by the time they come out, the hardware is quite underpowered compared to PCs. So my prediction is that the PS5 Pro's life cycle will be far longer, maybe like nine to 10 something years. And um, if there's like a mid-gen refresh, it might be more like a PS5 mini or something. FF7 news, okay, let's check it out. An update on FF7 Remake Part 2 or a new trailer for FF16 would be a great way for Square Enix to mark FF7's 25th anniversary. Maybe both? Hmm? 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 Recently, FF7 director Tetsuya Nomura teased an announcement coming for the game's 25th anniversary. Wait, of FF7 related specifically or just in general? Uh, news on the FF7 remake front has been quiet lately, with the latest big development being the game coming to PC via Epic Games Store, yeah, the Integrate version, which has led to some fun mods coming to the PC version. Yes, we've all seen those. Uh, however, that will likely change when this next announcement comes in June. There has been a good bit of speculation around what this announcement could be, but nothing has yet been confirmed by Nomura himself or Square Enix with the announcement coming on the 25th anniversary of FF7's original release. It's likely to be about what's next for FF7 and its various remakes uh, and spin-offs. However, the FF16 rumored to release this year, it's entirely possible that this announcement could instead be a trailer. Overall, there seems to be four strong possibilities for what Nomura's big next announcement could be teasing. Some like a, an update uh, on FF7 Remake Part 2 or a new trailer for FF16 could be met with a strong reception by many fans. Others, like the unfortunately real possibility that the news is just more updates coming to a malign spin-off. Uh, while it has only been two years since FF7 Remake was released and less than a year since the upgraded version, FF7 Integrated was released, the FF7 Remake Intermission DLC set up a sequel with an extra post credit scene showing the group's journey to the town of Calm. This scene has made fans even more excited to get more news about the next part of the FF7 Remix Saga. Despite the excitement though, it's unlikely that much will be shown beyond a possible trailer. Because of how <clears throat> recently Final Fantasy VII Remake and its intermission DLC was released, it's likely still a bit too early for a release date reveal quite yet. Well, obviously. Yes, all the assets have already been created, but I think... And yes, the next part won't take nearly as long because the assets are already there, but I think there's some rethinking that they're going to be doing with the battle system and how the open world system is going to work that it's probably too soon. I think it makes, yeah, this Ever Crisis thing was my next guess because this is the, Ever Crisis is supposed to be more like the original seven, but like in chapters compiled in like a DLC kind of format or expansion format of all the, like the timeline of FF7. So that might make more sense to me for a 25th anniversary. You think a remake part two might be shown later in the year? Maybe not even this year, actually. Uh, and I'd be fine with that as long as we're getting more 16 stuff. Announced in February 2021, FF7 Ever Crisis is a remake more faithful to the original game in both gameplay story and then FF7 Remake. That's true. During the first reveal of, uh, of Ever Crisis in the the bombing mission scene where you're fighting the guard scorpion, you actually saw Aerith in the party. And that's kind of a throwback to the original demo of FF7 original, where the demo was uh, Cloud, Barrett, and Aerith in the early version of the uh, of the demo. And then later they replaced it with Tifa. Uh, releasing on mobile, Ever Crisis is planned to drop in monthly installments and be free to play with loot boxes available for purchase. Hmm. The game will follow the timeline of the original game while also having sections dedicated to other entries in the Final Fantasy VII universe such as Crisis Core, Advent Children, and Dirge of Cerberus. Following its announcement, Square Enix revealed that FF7 Ever Crisis would launch September 2022. Despite this, there still hasn't been any major uh, gameplay showcases for the game. They've been showing a lot of little mods and stuff for First Soldier. Maybe the most optimistic thing you can hope for would be more clarification on this. The... Ever Crisis, a solid release date, maybe an update to First Soldier, and maybe, maybe some little tease 
of what's in store for Remake Part 2. Square Enix has given to the game, it's not out of the realm of possibility, that announcement Nomura is teasing is actually just a new update for the first soldier. It could even be a new update like the Crisis Core update in Season 2. Square Enix definitely has plenty of material to pull from with Advent Children not being out of the realm of possibility. Advent Children 4K Remaster? You wonder how Ever Crisis will be like? Like, will it have a world map or... No, I think it's going to be just chapter-based. It's going to be chapter-based and... Um, what is it? Like, it's released in... Uh, expansions or something like every three months it'll release like the next chapter and the next chapter and therefore it's like it's sort of subscription based it keeps you invested in coming back so maybe it's like chapter and in that way it's like a storytelling kind of thing that unfolds over time the success of Final Fantasy 14 has taught oh, and 11 has taught Square Enix that subscription based games is really where like the the bread and honey is it allows you to uh keep that retention factor and keep the players invested over time. Because the thing is, the that IP pool of Final Fantasy VII is so large anyways, they're going to be milking it for the next 30 years. So the big question is, well, how can we milk it? Do we just keep creating new games over and over again? Or can we take the more subscription-based route or something similar, the way that 14 does it? So here's like the base game, and then it's free. Every single update is free. So every three months, let's say, it ends on a cliffhanger and then the the next one is you know tune in next next expansion for the the continuation of Dragon Ball Z and then you'll get the the next patch and then the next patch and the next patch and every single one builds on the previous one uh, although the announcement is for Final Fantasy 7's and 25th anniversary the announcement content doesn't necessarily need to be Final Fantasy 7 related no it absolutely needs to be i mean if it's 20 if it's the 25th anniversary of a specific game why the hell would you be using that opportunity to say, oh, well, let's talk about this other game that's not related to this one. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense if the universe was contiguous, but it's not. I mean, Seven's universe is completely unrelated to every other Final Fantasy game. FF7 fans will be mad if that happened. Yeah, um, you see, remember during the showing of the first Awakening trailer of 16, it didn't just say... Square Enix. It said Square Enix, then it said Creative Business Unit 3. I think 16 is... It's setting itself up. Like, it wants you to know this game is being made by the people that made Final Fantasy 14. So it's not just contrary to what Final Fantasy 7's mission would be, which is promoting its universe and its IP. I think it's somewhat contradictory to 16's mission as well. Nothing has been... Confirmed yet, but some rumors include NFTs of Cloud and the whole FF7 team with Square Enix seemingly focused on NFTs in 2022. I don't think that necessarily means, though, that uh, it's NFTs like across the entire board. That's the reason why Nintendo and Square Enix right now are reframing their pursuit into NFTs as more play to own or play to contribute. And that could potentially work depending on how they do it. But even then, it's probably still at a preliminary stage, and I really doubt that if they're experimenting with NFTs at this point, it would start pretty small. I don't think it would, they would bring it to Final Fantasy anytime soon. In real life, I actually do use that technology in like certain work that I do for... It has like medical and government applications, but um, it has like potential applications in lots of things, like in... Uh, like gaming and movie passes and music and stuff. Uh, and potentially, depending on how it's used, it can be a game changer, but you have to be really careful as to how you use it. And the way that it's implemented right now, I'm not... I can understand why people don't want it there, because these play-to-earn games, one of the biggest problems is that, uh, like most of us, we're playing these games because we love them. And you know, it's not because we're trying to earn a profit or anything. Uh, we certainly might want to play it to, to own a piece of it, and that would be cool. But the problem with the play-to-earn model, which is the way that most NFTs are using it, is that the, the newcomers are often undercut by people who've already been in the game longer. And unfortunately, I mean, play-to-own or anything, there's going to be people that are trying to profiteer off of it. I think World of Warcraft had a big issue with this too, of real money trading. And Final Fantasy XIV is very specific about 
deterring any kind of real money trading in its platform for good reason too. This next update of Final Fantasy VII, the most optimistic thing we can probably hope for is a more solid release date and more elaboration on uh, Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. That's my guess. Because we saw very little. We just saw bits of uh, the bombing mission once again. And then uh, we... That was actually about it. So maybe we'll see more of Ever Crisis. We'll see the other parts of the FF7 universe that's going to be included and get a, get a solid release date and get a solid idea or a sense of well, how is this game going to play? How is it going to be released and such? I could see NFT being used in in-game crafting system, craft a weapon and have it be truly unique. Yeah, um, one thing that's... Uh, one positive that I do see in like some NFT games is that, in a sense, the assets that are like digitally unique, well, you own them. Like You own the IP. Like the Board Ape, Ape Mutant Yacht Club or whatever it is, uh, the people who own those NFTs actually own the IP rights, so you can use them in like marketing or something. So imagine if, just for the sake of argument, imagine if it was FF7, but it's all NFT'd. Well, if you own the cloud NFT, it would be like, well, now I own cloud, the IP. I can use cloud in my, uh, in my merchandising or something, and that's mine. Don't think they do something like that, but I, I get where the potential application could be. Just think they gotta tread very carefully because if it's not used correctly, it could degenerate into uh, like a gambling game. And I guess that's why people don't, I mean, right now, no one really likes microtransactions and things of that sort as is because there's already that. Uh, I'd be really careful how they, uh, how they end up implementing uh, NFTs and where because once people own something, I mean, it's 100% up to them to trade it or whatever. And there's going to be some rare stuff that people are willing to pay for. And if it has in-game utility, even more so, maybe. Let's say haven't played Final Fantasy VII or any part of it, or maybe even only one part of it, then this would be a great opportunity for them to show off, well, here's the entire FF7 universe all packed into one game on mobile. Yes, unfortunately but it gives you the entire FF7 experience. So I think that's cool. Oh, if that's the case, I remember Ever Crisis was, I think its tentative release date was September 2022. So that might be it. Yeah, that makes more sense now. I think this 25th anniversary thing is gonna be Ever Crisis. So I didn't miss anything else, did I? Oh, what the hell is this? For Spoken won't have microtransactions, Square Enix confirms. Am I misunderstanding microtransactions? Microtransactions are just like loot boxes, right? You you can pay to get like a boost or something. Because the Mog Station, with the exception of boosts, all the stuff that you buy is just cosmetic. Like glamours and emotes and stuff. It won't have it. So they confirmed that there's no plans to release for spoken microtransactions. However, the game will receive premium downloadable content. That's kind of a roundabout way of saying the same thing, right? Rumors of the game featuring microtransactions started swirling again over the last week when the game's rating board entries made references to in-game purchases. Microtransactions have been rumored for a while. Oh, loot boxes? Is that like buying... Well, what are you getting, though, is the main thing. I guess that that's what it really comes down to. What is it that you're getting? What is the... What is the thing that you're getting? Is it something that gives you a distinct advantage in-game? Because I personally never bought anything. I've gotten, like free downloadable stuff like extra weapons and stuff but it wasn't ever anything game breaking um and it wasn't anything that was required in order to beat the game right you can beat the game without loot boxes or microtransactions or anything and i my assumption was that all the loot boxes and microtransactions that was just like extra stuff you can pay for if you want but you don't have to they will receive a prequel dlc called intanta we trust that's cute sometime this winter However, no further details have been made available yet. I'm not too much of a fan of people pushing this game kind of to the sidelines. Uh, I'm really excited for this game, me specifically. All oh, right, here we go. Depends on the game. Lots of mobile games are like that. Oh, really? Like, you you must buy something in order to progress in the game? Pay to progress? No, that's extortion. That is, that is, that's just downright criminal, man. It's like... I'm I'm just about to <clears throat> to finish the final boss and says if you wish to continue pay us 50 bucks <laughs> <laughs>